Good morning, options traders. Well, I wanted to talk a little bit about a very old technical indicator called the put call ratio. Not to be confused with put call parity, that's a different animal altogether. But the put call ratio has been around for a long time and it's actually a quite powerful indicator, but it's not really one that a lot of people know about or know how to use on their charts. So let's take a look at the put call ratio, find out what it is, how you read it, and then we'll look at how to put it on your Thinkorswim platform. So the put call ratio, it's a technical indicator and it's very simple to calculate. You're not going to have to do it, computers will do it for you, but you're just going to take the total put volume divided by the total call volume. Now when I say the total put volume, I'm talking about all of the puts regardless of the expirations and the strikes. So maybe we're looking at the S&P 500 index. Add up the volumes for every single put that exists, regardless of the expirations or the strikes. We add them all up. We do the same thing for the calls, and then we just divide those out. So it's a very complicated one in that sense in terms of being able to gather the data, but the formula is actually quite easy. Now you might think that we would get an equal number of calls and puts in a neutral market, and therefore the ratio would be 1.0. Well, it turns out that 1.0 isn't neutral. Don't think of this as maybe the 50-yard line in a football field. And the reason is that we usually have more calls traded than puts. So this base level, in most cases, is going to be somewhere around 0.6 to 0.7. So think of this range being more of that 50-yard line. So if we ever fall below 0.6, the market is becoming overly bullish. And if the indicator rises above 1.0, the market's becoming overly bearish. However, and this is the big however, the put call ratio is a contrarian indicator. So if the market as a whole is becoming overly bullish, we are going to interpret that as a bearish signal. And if the market is becoming overly bearish, we are going to see that as actually becoming a bullish signal. So just remember that the put call ratio is a contrarian indicator. It's going to give you a signal that is opposite from what your intuition might tell you. So to see how the math works, let's just do a couple of simple examples. Let's say that we add up all of the put volume and we get 100. This is maybe for the S&P 500. Yeah, I know it's super low, but I'm doing that just to make the example easy. And then we add up all of the call volume for every single strike and expiration in the S&P 500. And magically, we also get 100 as well. And if that was true, we would get a put call ratio of 1. But once again, this doesn't mean that it's really a neutral market. Because that neutral ground is more of that 0.6 to 0.7 range. So what's going to drive this ratio away from 1? Well, let's take a look and see what happens if the number of calls goes up. Let's say we add up the number of put volumes for the S&P, again we get 100, but now we get a very big number for the calls. Let's say we get 200. So 100 divided by 200 is of course a half, but notice what drove this number down from one to a half. The number of calls was getting much higher compared to the puts, and that's what drove our ratio down. So think about it, your intuition might say, hey, everybody's becoming very bullish, but that doesn't mean that it's a bullish indicator. We would interpret this as a bearish signal, which might seem a little odd, but if you think about it, it makes sense. If everybody in the market, relatively speaking, is swinging over to the bullish side, everybody's buying calls, we're running out of buyers. There's probably not much more room to the upside, and that's what's making us actually lean towards the bearish outlook. So what would drive this ratio up? Well, let's say that we counted up all of the put volumes and we get 110, but our call volumes were at 100. So we divide these out, we of course get 1.1. So what caused this to increase from a half to 1.1? Well, what caused it is that the number of puts relative to the calls increased. Everybody's out there buying puts. And that's what's driving the put call ratio higher. But because this is a contrarian indicator, 
we're not going to see this as bearish, we're going to see it as bullish. So just remember that if you see the put call ratio going down, think of that as bearish. Isn't that how we usually interpret bearish prices going down? Think of this ratio as going lower is bearish, but if the ratio is going higher, that's bullish. So here's some data that I downloaded on the S&P 500. This is the put call ratio from about 2017 till almost the end of 2019. And during this period, we had an average of 0.95. So right about here. So this is a little bit higher than the 0.6 to 0.7 range that I talked about earlier. But again, it depends on the underlying that you're looking at and the markets that you're in. And during this time, we also had a standard deviation of 0.14. And that tells us that one standard deviation down is around 0.8 to the downside and one standard deviation up is about 1.1 to the upside. So you could at least in general terms say that anytime the put call ratio goes above 1.1, we might interpret that as being a little bit to the bullish side. And if it drops below 0.8, uh, maybe we start leaning towards the bearish side. So as I talked about in the presentation, I wouldn't get too worried about this in the middle and trying to find buy and sell signals. You can just see it's just thick with crossings in here. Pay more attention to these extremes, to the upside or to the downside. Those are going to be much more meaningful indicators. So now let's jump over to the Thinkorswim platform, find out how to put the put call ratio on your platforms, and we'll look at some examples. Unfortunately, E-Trade does not allow that, at least at this time. But for those using TOS, you can certainly do it. So over in the Thinkorswim platform, I've got the SPX or the S&P 500 on my charts. But what if we wanted to look at the put call ratio? Well, to do it for the S&P 500, come up here, you're going to type a dollar sign and then PC for put call and then SP for the S&P 500. So hit enter and there it is. Now, one thing that you have to understand, and this is really true for all types of data, you want to make sure you understand what you're looking at. It's not a bad idea to go and verify it. And what I found is that I also downloaded some information from the SIBO and I compared it to the S&P 500 for Thinkorswim and they do not match. And in some places, not even remotely close. Now maybe Thinkorswim is using a dollar weighted version or they're doing some type of a tweak. But part of the point is that that doesn't really matter because it's all relative. You can see that it tends to just go sideways, a lot like volatility. And what really matters is whether you're at relative highs or at relative lows. So if you're not even real sure of the data or where it's coming from, you can still make very good use of it. So here's maybe one way you could do it. Come up here to Drawings. Go to Drawing Tools. Let's grab this trend line. I'm just going to draw a horizontal line as a ruler. Right mouse click and activate it. That allows me to move it. And I'm just going to slide it up and down on my chart. So what I don't want to do is to just find the highs. That's not going to be real helpful because chances are it's not going to get much higher than the highs. We're trying to find a range where we're capturing a lot of the data, but just not all of it. So maybe in this range down in here, we might say there are some spikes above it, not too infrequent, but at the same time, not too common either. This might be a trigger for us to say, you know what, it's looking like we're getting into some bullish territory. And if I look over here to the right on this platform, going to be around 0.8. So that might be a real simple way of using the put call ratio. Let's left mouse click, drag on it, bring it down below. I'm going to do the same thing down here uh, maybe somewhere in this range in here. So trying to find a, a good, almost like a support level in technical analysis. I don't want to bring it to the very bottom, but I can see that we're getting a few occasions where we do drop below this. And on this system, that's going to be at about 0.45. But again, remember, technical analysis is not a finely sharpened pencil. Could we call it 0.5? Sure. Could we call it 0.4? Sure. It's just giving you some type of a guide saying that if the markets drop below this point, 
we're now going to start thinking that it's probably going to turn bearish. So that's a pretty simple way to use it. But what else could we do? Well, rather than having to download all of this information to an Excel spreadsheet and figuring out the average and the standard deviation, maybe we could put some Bollinger Bands. Let that calculate the standard deviation for us. So come up here to Studies, slide down to Add Study. The Bollinger Bands are an upper study because it's actually what's called an overlay. It sits on top of your charts. So let's come over here, and right there are the Bollinger Bands. Left mouse click there. And there they are. So I can see that anything above here is above two standard deviations, and anything below this bottom line is below minus two. They're a little hard to see, and I also don't like the fact that this is such a short-term standard deviation. So let's go and change that. Come back up here to Studies, and click on Edit Studies, and right here are the Bollinger Bands. So if we click on this cog wheel, the default in Thinkorswim is 20 days or 20 periods, and because I'm in a day chart, we're looking at every 20 days we're using to calculate our averages and our standard deviations. Let's widen that out a bit, maybe to 100. And I can also change the colors and the thickness. Let's make our lower band maybe red, like we did before. And I'm going to thicken it up a bit. Let's choose the upper band. We'll make green, make it also a 3, tell it OK, apply, and OK. So now we can see the times when we're getting above two standard deviations, or the times that we're getting below two standard deviations. Again, it's going to give us a nice read on some times when we're getting relatively high or low. So take a look at where we are right now in the markets. We're at January 10th of 2021, so kind of been below this bottom two standard deviation band for a while. So if you had to guess, leaning towards the bearish side, which makes sense because the markets are at all-time highs. Now another thing that we could do is to do an overlay. So let's make this actually the SPX. Let's put the actual index on. And I'm going to take the Bollinger Bands off. And what I can do is come up here to Studies, Edit Studies, and in this box, I'm going to type compare. I'm looking for this word right here, comparison. Click there, choose Add Selected, and that's going to bring it over here into this box on the right. And that means it's now going to appear on our charts. Click the cog wheel, and what I want to make my comparison is the put call ratio. So let's type in dollar sign PC for put call ratio, and then SP for S&P 500. Choose OK, Apply, and OK. So now, let's zoom in a bit. Over on the right, we've got the level of the SPX, and on the left, we have the level of the put call ratio. So take a look during coronavirus. Look at this. We were up at about almost 1.2. These were just almost unheard of highs. I mean, look at how far back we go. That had to be a signal to tell you that this was not the time to be bearish. All right, so let's zoom back in there and look at where it occurred. Almost right at the bottom. Then look at what happened when we came out of it on this nice V bottom. Look what happened to that ratio. Dropped sharply. Now we're down, looks like actually down in here at about 0.6. So even if you didn't get in till up into here, you still caught a very, very healthy rally. Look at this, and look at how low that ratio kept going, saying that we are now into really some bullish markets. As we got this turn right here, pretty good little spike in the put call ratio. So once again, don't get caught up into the, the middle ground here. There's just so much whipsawing and try and use this as a, especially a short-term indicator, but definitely pay attention to it when you get into some extreme market conditions. Let's look at the fourth quarter of 2018 back into here and we had all this negative news about retail sales. Looks almost like coronavirus. Big drop off, big V bottom. Look at the put call ratio, 1.08. I 
But again, it doesn't really matter what the number is. It's just that it's at a relative high. And so if we, if we really zoom back out here, I mean, how often do we hit this? This is a really good sign that this market is becoming overly, overly bearish. And if that's true, we should probably lean towards the bullish side. Then we got our bull kicker right here. Another good sign. And then what happened as the market started to rally? Look at the put call ratio. Came right down to below 0.6 at this point. And this, again, would have been a very nice entry point. So I hope this helps you to understand the put call ratio. And please give it a shot, especially for those of you who have think or swim. And when you get into extended markets, whether to the upside or the downside, definitely consider looking at the put call ratio. And it can give you some very nice signals of some turning points in the markets. And anything that can help you do that will help you make better decisions. And for anyone who'd like to learn more about the arts and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course, Strategy Lab, and a brand new technical analysis course for 2021. You can find it all at optionsa-z.com. Also, please join us on the Facebook trading group, Options A to Z, and you can find a link in the description below.